Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven, and in today's episode of the Maven Nation, we're going to be talking about the top hacks that would allow you to shoot with a single card as a pro. This is a very hot topic. I think a lot of people are going to be really upset with me, but by the end of this video, you should know that it's absolutely no problem whatsoever. First, let me say thank you to our sponsor, Proven Nutrition. They make an energy drink called Corfit. It has no caffeine stimulants. It is low glycemic. It is loaded with natural supplements, including citrulline malate, incisus quadrangularis. That helps you heal your tendons and bones. I drink it every day when I work out, and I've lost 35 pounds using that instead of Gatorade. So I know it works. It tastes amazing. There are free samples. If you follow the link, all you have to do is cover shipping and handling. Thank you to Proven Nutrition. So in today's episode, we're gonna tackle the thing that I keep on seeing on lots of camera reviews where camera reviewers will say, hey, this has one card slot, it's a deal breaker. And I've been shooting as a pro since 2003, 2004, around that time. My first camera was the Canon 10D and I shot a wedding with that camera. It had one card slot. It was like six megapixels. And so we're talking about a camera that in, in terms of specs, it was nothing compared to what we have now. And I later upgraded to 220Ds. And the funny thing about this, those are APS-C cameras. So as a side note, can you shoot pro APS-C? Absolutely, if you know what you're doing. It's more about the skill set of the photographer, right? That's why I make these training videos. So my friend Tony Northrup recently did a poll where he asked a bunch of people about the cards and the number of failures and things of that nature. And the truth of the matter is, it does seem that certain brands are better, especially when you get a knockoff brand that it's, it's less reliable. Pro shooters, I recommend using SanDisk cards. That's what I use. I've, in my whole career of shooting, I've had one failure and it wasn't even the whole card. It was part of the card. It became corrupted when I, I think I ejected it from my Mac without, you know, telling it to eject or something like that. And I lost some of the images. It's the only time it's ever happened to me in 15 years of shooting. So the first concept on this is to get out of this mind of, of, the glass is 1% empty. The glass is 99% full. If you have an opportunity to do a job and somebody says you have a 99% chance that everything's gonna be fine and dandy, you take that opportunity every single time. Why? Because if you were to go to Las Vegas and, and gamble on those odds, you're gonna be a billionaire. Okay, so that's the first part of it. In recent years, what has happened is that camera manufacturers have started making cameras with dual card slots and it allows pros to back up their images onto separate cards. So you have raw images on one and JPEGs on, on the other or double JPEGs on both. It just depends on what you're doing and what your preferences are. And since that time, the idea has been that if you don't have two card slots, you can't shoot a professional event because if you lose it, then you're, you're, you know, you're out of luck and your customer's gonna hate you and things of that nature. And the truth of the matter is there are some very easy hacks to get around this. And I'm gonna share each of these with you right now. First hack that I would give you is to work on your people skills. Because we've learned, and I think the book was the tipping point, I wanna say, where they interviewed these doctors who had been sued for malpractice. And what they found out was when they went in there, doctors aren't sued for malpractice. Doctors are sued because they are disliked. It has more to do with their bedside manner. And as they went in and they did more of this research, they found out that it is psychologically very difficult to sue somebody who you like. So this brings to mind a story of a wedding I shot where they had hired a pro photographer and I was doing the video and they also asked me to do some secondary shooting. It was kind of weird, but I got to watch this pro photographer work with the bride. In the way that he talked to her, in his mannerisms, he was kind of abrasive and rough. And after about 10 minutes, she just hated him. And the guy was better than me. And so it was interesting that I, I would also shoot when he was shooting. And when they got the pictures back, my pictures weren't as good as his. I saw his pictures were great. She hated his pictures. Why? Because she hated him. It's the same thing with YouTube. There are people out there that they just, they hate me. There's nothing I can say or do that will get them to change their mind. And so when somebody dislikes you, it becomes much easier for them to want to sue you. So that's the first thing that I'd recommend is work on your people skills. The second hack, you should not be doing any paid work without a written contract. And in that written contract, this is something that we did for weddings when I was still doing weddings, is uh, 
put a clause in there that limits the liability that they can sue you for. So it's gonna be limited to the price of the package. It has to be through arbitration. It has to be under these circumstances, yada, yada, yada. So if you're doing paid work, have an airtight contract that protects you from them suing you for 50 or $100,000 because you distressed them and lost all their images. Third hack I've already talked about is bring a second shooter because now at this point you have two cameras and technically you have two cards at the shoot and the probability of both of those cards dying becomes even smaller, probably about the same as if you lost both cards in one camera. Which brings us to our final hacks that as a wedding photographer, I always had two cameras with me. I had one that had 24 to 70, and I had one that had a 70 to 200, and I shot most of my, my weddings that way simply because I didn't need to change lenses. I could pick up the normal zoom, I could pick up the telephoto zoom, and so as those cameras are riding to those cards, after the ceremony ended, I would take the cards out, put them into a card safe, put fresh cards into the cameras, and so even if you did lose one of those cards, you have the card from the other camera and so as you go through you know, the, you know, the ceremony, the reception, and the dancing, the parting, is I would build up this collection of eight different cards. And so you should definitely not be shooting a wedding with one camera. I think that's kind of risky. I mean, you could do it if you had to, but you wanna have backups. I think I had three cameras. So in any event, those are some very important hacks and some tips to get around the problem of the one card slot, is work on your people skills, have an airtight contract, Bring a second shooter, bring a second camera, and change your cards throughout the event. Thank you to our sponsor, Proven Nutrition. If you guys want to try their energy drink, CoreFit, the link is in the description. Just cover shipping and handling, and they'll send that out. If there's a specific topic you guys want me to cover, I would love to know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.